In this video, we're going to focus on how we can convert, as you can see here, five different arrays into a very nice organized data structure that we have here where you can break it down and eventually show that value specifically in here. And this is very useful because data structures are extremely powerful, but understanding how to convert your data from an array, which you usually have from your database, into a data structure setup is very important to know. So let's start to look at this. In this video, we're going to focus on how to convert arrays into data structures in Chart.js. And this is really important. If you've seen my other videos, I very often say that data structures are very powerful. However, if you have a pre-written data structure, it is fine. But what if you don't have them? What if you just have arrays and they need to be eventually converted into what we call a multi-dimensional array or data structure? So what we're going to do here is to build one based on multiple basic arrays that we maybe get from our database and we need to convert this into the correct structure. And learning this is useful because then you can really start to apply and use the data structure features. So let's start to work on this. First thing what we need to do is we need to get a default code. So what I recommend you to go is to go to chartjs tree.com, getting started. And then in here, if you scroll down, and if you might know, you might notice this here. For some reason, my Google Chrome give this error. Firefox doesn't, doesn't. So I can't explain why. However, we need a chunk of code that is here pre-written. So we're going to copy this code. And if you want to understand what this code does, read the article. But also, there's a whole video here about that, so you can watch that as well. So once we have this, I want to cut out this and I want to put it in here. At least for me, this is not necessary for you. Save this and then refresh. So now we have a nice uh, chart here, a bar chart, and we could convert this into any kind of chart. So let's make it for fun, make this a line chart. So we make this a line chart, and then I'll just get a single color here. I'll just get the black color, and just put it in there, and then make sure we have a comma here. Same here, we're going to remove all of those except for this background color here put a comment there all right so if i save this now refresh we have now a black line here beautiful what i want to do here at least is to give it a tension so it will look more curved 0 0.4 is the tension set so it's a curving all right the elasticity now you can see because it's more elastic so it has curves beautiful so now we have this what i would like to do now is well if you are familiar with the data sets here so what happened if we have this for example here let's assume we want to create three different lines as well and we have them based on a constant of let's say days equals this specific value here so just put it in there and then what we have more well we can put it we can make here days and what we have more is let's say a constant with the data or well we can uh, we can call this Let's say we have different lines. One is for profit, one is for cost, and one is for revenue. So we say here, profit equals, let's grab this. Now we have here the profit. And now we have a few more. So let's put in two more. One is for sales, and then the other one is for cost. So I will say here, profit, sales, cost. All right, so our cost will be just nine, Six, three, four and a half, six, one and a half, and four and a half. All right, so we have this, and then sales would be um, a bit more. Let's say twenty-seven. We have your eighteen, and this. I'll just make some numbers up. And then here we have uh, well, let's say twenty-four. 12, this will be let's say 24 as well, and this will be 12, and this one will be 18. All right, so they're not really equal, but it doesn't matter for now. I don't, I don't want to focus too much on the uh, correctness of everything, just focus on the data structure. So, if you're familiar with the data structure, data structure is basically this. So, we have if we have here data structure, let's say data structure here, basically it would be in the data, it would show like this. We have here the brackets, indicating this is an array, and then in here we have these curly braces. And these curly braces would say here, for example, days, and here would be Monday, etc., etc. 
and then we have what more we have a comma here uh, we can categorize these in the category of uh, financials so financial sales financial costs and financial profit so let's say yeah, financials in the financials we have another curly braces or you can just put it together that's all right and then in here we will have uh, let's say our cost and cost would be nine in this case for the first one then you have another one you're going to sales and sales would be 27 and finally we have here our profit which would be 18 all right so we have this and then this would be multiplied multiple times for every single day here so Tuesday and you can imagine etc etc so we have this here and what we really want to do eventually this should be converted or this here needs to be converted in this kind of structure so this is eventually the visual end result we want but now we have an issue we get multiple arrays here we don't get it from the database ready as how we want them so what we need to do here eventually is to create correctly the structure that we want well, in this case, we need to work on how to create our own or how to convert our arrays into a multi-dimensional array or a data structure. So for this, let's say here, uh, financials or financials numbers, I have no idea, or yeah, I guess financials would be fine, or financial numbers. And the reason why I'm going to do with financial numbers, because we already have your financials to avoid the confusion. So what we're going to do here is we create a constant with a value name. And then what we want to do eventually is we want to look through all of these. I assume, this is the one assumption I do assume, is that your numbers here, this, if you are, we have here seven elements in the array. So I expect all of those consist of seven elements. Very important. If you don't have that, then you might get an error. So this is very important. That should be consistent in certain level. So what we're going to do now is, we're going to grab the first one. Let's say we get the days. So we say here in, in here, array days, and then we're going to use the map method. And the map method, method is basically a function that will loop through every specific item here, very similar to a for each, or sorry, a uh, for loop. And with a for loop, you have to count, and then you have here the length, but you have the length is equals seven, but an array has six values, or it starts with zero, so the ending is six. So normally for a for loop you do minus one with a map you don't have to do that because they recognize if we just look through every one of them we don't have to count them we will just have built-in features in there for the index so this is very useful so then what we're going to do here is we're going to have here two parentheses here then in here we're going to say uh, well let's give the day here this array We'll loop to one and every single value here is called a day in this case we will rename it as a day as you can use any other value but day is the most descriptive we're going to this so we say day and do another one comma index and then here we're going to use the uh, the arrow function uh, operator or the arrow function basically uh, uh, indicating that this is a function in essence if you wonder what this really means basically means this function and then we would remove this because here you would do like that and basically we would remove this and it would just mean this and from here we would do the function however in more modern uh, javascript we recommend you to remove function as a word and just put in this arrow operator or arrow function indicate that this is a function as well all right so basically the same essence so what we're going to do here is the first thing what we're going to say here is we're going to create here a uh, value which is the let value and this will call our day object meaning we're going to create an object here what we really want to do here now is Remember, we are in an array already because the map understands, the map function understands that we are in an array, that's why it loops through this array. So it understands this. So that means that the brackets are already given. This here, these brackets, are already given. And basically here, this financial numbers, the constant will eventually be this. That's what we're really doing here. We say financial numbers, brackets are already given, but now what we need to do is we need this curly braces here. So that's what we're going to do here. So the curly braces here, is this object here once we did that enter because what we want to do here really is to loop through this and then within this specific object we'll put in the name days month etc etc so that's what we want to do here next so what we can say here is the following we're going to say here the day object 
and then we can give it a name. We can give it days, but I realize it should be maybe a day. So we say here, just day as well. So this is basically this one here. It has nothing to do with this, because this day is representing the value or the string value, month, Monday, Tuesday, etc., etc. This one is just this here. This is like a description of this specific uh, value or object. So then we say here day, and this day will be equal to the variable of day this. All right? Very important to understand this difference. So once we have this, what we want to do next, put another enter, is in here we want to make another curly braces. And this curly brace here, well, basically is the financial. So what we need to do here is the following. We're going to say in here, day object, which is the next one. So basically we're going to create the next one with the name dot financials. But what this really does is only one thing. We're going to say here, the curly braces. So basically the financials will be equal to this. And then here, of course, this is blank still. It doesn't exist yet so far. So what we're going to do now is basically insert the next one here finances and then it would be here the cost so we're going to grab this the financials and then we say here dot and we grab here the cost and the cost here will be equal to what exactly well here we're going to work with the index this is very important because here we have the day you have here the index or maybe what i should do here is just to give you a console log so you understand what i'm doing here you can also see the representation of it. You will see it will loop through all of these, and the day and the index will basically be the index related to the day value. So if I save this, refresh here, open up the developer tab, you can see we will loop through this. You see Monday, that is the day value, and then index of Monday is zero. We just correct because the first element in the array is called the index zero, and then etc. etc. all up to six. Sunday is six because that's the seven element. But of course, remember arrays are zero count base zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so now we have this here. So basically, once we have this understanding, what we want to do now is this index here also matches nicely with this. And this is the reason why I told you it should match accordingly with each other or else you will get an issue because we're going to use the index here. But if you do profit.index, well, let's say here, uh, uh, or what we need here was the cost. Let's do cost.index, that's the one eventually we want. If we save this and refresh, you can see here the cost is 9. Well, is it correct? Well, the cost is 9 on Monday. And the last one should be 4.5, that's on Sunday. Here you are. You can see here it matches correctly. So what we're going to do now is just basically this. Matching these two here together accordingly. So we have this cost here and now you probably figure out we just need to copy this put it in there so once we did that this will work nicely and then we can just comment out this all right so now we have this one the next one of course is sales and profit exactly the same the only thing that we're changing here is basically the object name in the financials which is here sales and this sales equals here index array sales so we put it in here, we get the same one here, there we are. Once we do another one here, this will be for the cost. Oh, sorry, not the cost, but the profit. Put in your profit, your profit, and there we are. So if we save this now, what we have to do here is basically the last thing. So we say return, and this return will be the object, or the day object, which is the starting point of everything here. Or basically everything of this entire loop. So once we have this, what we have to do now is final one is the console log. The console log here is to show not the day object, because this day object, this everything here, has been looped in this specific item. That's why I told you this one equals this here. So if I say here console log, save this, refresh, and now you can see we have our array completely matching this. The financial numbers here is just this one here, showing everything exactly the same we have the day tuesday cost profit sales beautiful so we could do another one here um let's say tax i have no idea i'm just making stuff up here this is one 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 if i save this now and refresh you can see here now we have now also added a new item oh sorry 
Did we do that? We didn't add yet. We have only this one, of course, that we need to do here. Just duplicate this and then just change the item of this, the financials into tax. And then here, profit should be tax as well. Just save with this array. Save this. Refresh. And now if you open up here our array, you can see here the financials has now a new item called tax. Same here. We open on this one here. There we are. So now we have this. And basically with this, you can now very easily start to adjust this. So if you want to adjust here, there was the profit, right, that we got here. So let's put in here now these financial numbers and just move this all or change this all. So we have this here financial numbers. I'm going to use a simple trick here. We just pinpoint the financial numbers and then the profit specifically. All right. So the labels here has to be commented out. Very important here. So we're going to put in a comma. And then once we put in a comma here, because we're going to use data sets, with data sets we need to do parsing. And parse means make something readable for. So in this case, our data set, or sorry, our um, this is our data structure will be parsed or make readable for our chart JS uh, data set object here. So basically we'll make it readable in here. So that's why I'm going to use parse or parsing. That's the official namespace term. And then in here, all we need to do here is to say here the X axis key. That's the one we want. And then here we grab the specific value. So in what case would be the value here? Well, the one is days and the days would be, uh, well, let's see what's our object name here. It's day. Remember this one is the one. So it's the day. So we say first one, the X is X X will be days. It's this one here. And then another one, we make a comma here. And then we say here the Y axis key equals, um, well, what we could say here is, for example, if you want the profit item, we can just say financials dot profit. Or dot profit, that's the official term, not profit. So it's out of S, just this one here. All right, so once we have this, save this, refresh. Oh, financials is not defined. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, all right, uh, I realize here, we forgot it. We need to make here a, sorry, a string. So we need to put in here quotations. Why? Because these are objects here. So if I save this now, refresh, there you are. So now it starts to show nicely everything back to original state. So what if we change this, for example, to financials, we do text, and everything should be number one here. So I do this, text, save, refresh, and now it's just a straight line because it is always one value here because of the text. So if you put it here, let's say here, uh, we have this value, let's make here one, two, three, four, five, four, refresh, you can see here now Sunday has been adjusted and there we are. So this is basically the way how you can use arrays and how you can convert arrays into data structures here like this, which can be layers deep. You can go even deeper here, of course, based on what we did by using these kind of items here. You can describe it deeper and deeper, multiple levels deeper if necessary. So if you like this video, I highly recommend you as well to check another one out, which is about how to convert it. If you have X and Y values, this is related to a very similar to it, a multi-dimensional array or data structures, but then on X and Y.